All right, you guys. Hey, it's Jana Stolnik. Oh, there we go. Um, I want to see if I can actually share this um, bigger with you. Uh, let's see here. Give me just one second. Let's see views slideshow. I want to make sure that it takes up your full screen so that you guys can see it. So I was actually going to, um, <clears throat> oops, let's go back here. I was actually going to announce this and, um, you know, make it a big deal. And then I decided my life is crazy. I need to just do it when it's best for me. And then you guys can hop on and watch the replay whenever it's best for your life. So hopefully, I'm hoping you guys can hear me. Um, let me double check. I want to check sound to make sure. I'm, there we go. Announce it. Okay, cool. I just want to make sure sound and picture is working before I get going and do an hour presentation and then nobody could hear me. <laughs> so hey everybody, it's Jana Stolnik. Um, I am so excited that you guys are here. Um, you are a part of our group, Legal Nurses Rock, or This Nurse Means Business. And uh, we are just so grateful for you guys. I think we surpassed the 12,000 uh, fans on our Facebook page. So I've been really pumped up about that. And our Crush It! The Legal Nurse Blueprint for Success book went number one on Amazon uh, for new releases yesterday. And that is just so incredibly exciting, you guys. I love being able to bring you guys information about building a legal nursing business from home. Uh, a bit about me, if you don't know me or know my journey, I started my legal nursing business 11 years ago um, in Chicago, Illinois. I had been doing um, travel assignments at the time. Um, I actually originally kind of started my career. I was a CNA and then an LVN and then an RN, and then I went back for my bachelor's. So I kind of was everybody, I played every role. Um, and I kind of got bored. I started in the NICU, um, you know, that I was like, okay, I need, a, I need a little more challenge. So I moved into the PICU. Um, and then they eventually created this team at my hospital that was like NICU, PICU, ER, kind of back and forth. So I did that for a long time, um, loved it kind of got bored with it and did like the float pool. I love changing floors like daily. I don't know. It made the week go by faster. Plus I had a lot of friends. Um, so it was very fun for me. I love doing the float pool and I was able to take all that experience and start travel nursing. And so I worked all, all over the country actually. And also in Haiti as a nurse, um, I was in Haiti right after the, like a week after the earthquake, actually maybe just a few days after the earthquake in 2010, um, and did some mass triage casualty type stuff there. Um, that was a life-changing experience. Um, we can talk about that at another time, but um, so I've seen a lot in my career as a registered nurse, and um, you know, there were a lot of things that I I felt that I wanted to change um, both for nurses and for patients. And um, I kind of started searching attorney, nurse, and started like looking up like, is there something in law that I can do as a nurse that would help me feel like I was, I don't know, bettering the world? And I stumbled upon legal nurse consulting. Um, and so I took a course um, up in Vegas <laughs> um, in 2009. And, um, you know, I'd say the rest is history, but it was a really long journey, you guys. And, and this is not an overnight success. And I always try to, you know, express that with people that overnight successes actually don't actually happen overnight. Does that make sense? Um, it is something that takes time to build. Some people get lucky and they land that attorney client right away and they start having cases, but I was not that lucky. Um, it's taken me quite a few years to build a nice, um, you know, a nice clientele of attorneys that I just adore and love working with. Um, but I've been doing this for 11 years and I've just never stopped. I've kept going. And so if you are looking at building an LNC business or if you are already, you know, you already have your business, you have your logo and your name, but you're finding you're hitting the wall and you're not, 
you know, you're not getting those attorney clients and you're not having the success that you hoped for. I created my book, Crush It For You, and I also created this PowerPoint for you. I really want to help you guys get out there, get in the market, get your name and your face out there, and you know, at least help you land that very first attorney client. Because once you have that wind, that win under your belt, you guys, um, your confidence will explode. It, and it really is just getting that one awesome attorney client that really finds value in you and, and, and the value in what you can bring as a nurse to their team. And I tell you, like your confidence will just go through the roof. So really my goal is to help everybody just find their first attorney client, get that confidence, feel that excitement, and then use that to fuel the rest of their LNC career and just get out there and keep doing the do and make it happen. So I have this presentation for you. Feel free to watch the replay. I would love to know where you're watching from, you guys. I do, they, this is for free, right? I'm here, my nanny's downstairs. I'm doing this for free. So hearing from you, getting you chiming in and making comments, that fuels me, that gets me excited, that keeps me going and bringing you more content. So please shout out in the comment section where you're watching from, your like nursing specialty, where you are in your LNC career. I want to hear from you guys. I do go back and read all of these comments. I think sometimes people think maybe I'm a fake person because some people are really rude and send me nasty emails. <laughs> um, and um, I actually do try to go back and read and comment on everybody's, on everybody's um, messages. Um, which is why I think I was showing the girls yesterday. I have like 87,000, no, 83,000 emails, 784 missed text messages and 12 voicemails, which actually isn't that bad. Um, so I do really take the time to read them. And um, you guys are all very important to me. And I want everyone to have as much success as I've had. And I want you to love your career as a registered nurse, because I remember when I first finished nursing school, that I was so excited and passionate about helping people. And I remember the first two years of nursing and it wasn't what I thought. And I remember going, I, I can remember the place and the time you guys, I was with my mom. We were going to like a craft store, like a, like a country craft store. And I remember getting out of the car saying to my mom, mom, I can't laugh and I can't cry anymore. And this was two years after being a nurse. And mind you, I had been a CNA for a number of years and LVM for a number of years and was, you know, always wanted to be an RN. And that was like the, the turning point in my career that I realized I loved helping people, but something was off. The system was off. The system wasn't right. Nurses, we were kind of being abused, right? Too many patients. We can't give that quality care. We truly love and care for people, but if we can't do the very best job that we know we can do, um, it crushes us. Um, and so I, I remember it was those first two years of, of nursing that I really started thinking like, maybe this isn't for me, what else can I do? And long story short, found legal nursing and my fire for being a registered nurse is there again. And I want everyone to feel that. So this PowerPoint, you guys, is really about marketing your business. I'm just going to go over a bunch of stuff. Let, you know, absorb what will absorb. Take away what you can. It's all very overwhelming, you guys. This is years of stuff that I've learned compacted into this tiny little PowerPoint for you. So take away from it what you can. Implement what you can. Um, the most important thing is that you get started on something, um, but it doesn't all have to happen overnight. I, you know, I just came up with my logo or my, um, my slogan like two years ago and I've been in business 11 years. So you guys, it doesn't have to be perfect for you to get started. And sometimes, uh, our type A personalities cause us to think we have to be completely perfect before getting started or getting our name out there, and it doesn't. So I want you to wipe all of that out of your mind if that's where your mind is. And, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, you guys. We just have to get started. We just have to get moving a bit and get our name and our, um, you know, our info out there for some attorney clients and land that first attorney. Um, so anyway, 
So I'm gonna go ahead and get started, you guys. Grab a pen and paper. And I'm just gonna share with you basically uh, some marketing tips. So this is all taken from my book, you guys. Crush It, The Legal Nurse Blueprint for Success. I'm Janice Dolnick, BSN, RN, LNC. Um, and uh, here we go. So one thing that I like, um, you know, I always tell everybody it's important to brand yourself or brand your business if it's not gonna be your face that you're branding brand your um, logo. And here's why you guys, when I just invite you to just close your eyes for a second and think about Pepsi. What do you see when you think of the word Pepsi? I see blue, I see red, I see white. Like I can really see Pepsi in my head. This is a brand that they've taken and they've made so, they've done such a good job that all of us can pretty much see it in our head when we close our eyes. And that's what I want you to create when you're out in the, in the legal field. When an attorney closes his eyes or closes her eyes, I want her to think, and she's thinking, he's thinking, I need, I need help. I need an expert witness. I need somebody with some medical you know, smarts to help me walk through this. And they close their eyes. The first thing they think of should be you. You need to be at the forefront of every lawyer's mind because you are that medical professional. And so everything that I teach is really about positioning yourself professionally. And it's really all in the details. And I'm gonna go over how to do that, how to brand yourself and um, all the goods here. So just be patient. So I have a lot of questions um, and I apologize you guys, I just had, I had thyroid cancer for those of you that don't know and I just had it removed a week and a half ago. So my voice is still a little funky. Um, so I may have to take some pauses here. Um, I'm getting a lot of messages and I just wanna make sure people can hear me. Okay, cool. So a lot of nurses reach out to me and they say, hey, what's a CV? So in the legal world, a resume essentially is a CV, except a CV looks a little different, okay? A CV highlights like your experience for whatever it is that you are um, applying for, I guess you could say. So um, if, a, if a, a lawyer says, hey, I need an ICU nurse expert, your CV should highlight your ICU experience. And anything that would consider you an expert in that field. And so it looks a little different. CVs look a little different. In the nursing world, we call them resumes. Lawyers call them CVs. So if you're brand new to this and a lawyer says, hey, send me your CV, and you're like, what the heck is that? It's basically a resume, but it looks different. You guys, and I give a bunch of recommendations on who to use to help you build a CV affordably if you have no idea how to do one. I think you could hop on the Microsoft Word and there's a template for it for free there, or there are companies that do them for very affordable, you know, for super, you know, super affordable if that is something you don't even wanna deal with. And I give all those tips inside of the NNC members lounge. <clears throat> but overall, you guys, you just wanna consider the overall look and feel of the document. Oh, there's no periods here. What does your CV document say to you before you even read a word of the text? Like you want, if somebody's looking at your CV, what's the first thing they see? What do they feel? Is it professional? Like what is the feel that they're getting off of your CV? You wanna use simple, readable, and a consistent format. You guys, I've seen CVs that nurses send over with different fonts and different like text, um, different fonts and different like sizes of font. Um, just make sure before you send these that they're fluid throughout, okay? Choose black or dark gray for the main text of your CV, you guys. I like black. Um, remember that your CV is not an art project, you guys. It's a business document that should convey your professionalism and expertise. And it should also show personality, but err on the side of professionalism. So it's okay for your CV to say, you know, this is the type of person I am, but make sure that's professional. Like you don't want to have it be like, you know, rainbow colors and, you know, fireworks. You want it to be professional because the lawyers are, um, you know, probably passing it around their law firm. So just make sure that you guys, that it's not messy, okay? And I see a lot of 
people include like paragraphs and paragraphs of information, you guys, I try to send over a one to two page max CV. I try to keep it to like on point, a single sentence or two. And attorneys really want you to get to the point. Like, how are you going to help them? And how are you the expert? Now there's two sides of legal nursing. There is the behind the scenes legal nurse who never does depositions or trials. She's really kind of behind the scenes working with the lawyer, helping them on chronologies, helping them kind of build their case. And her work is not discoverable. Her or his, sorry. And there's lots of guys that do this too. And then there's the expert witness nurse, legal nurse, okay? And their work is discoverable. They're the ones that love doing depositions and trials. I've done a few. I don't do them anymore. Now that I'm a mom, it's really hard. <clears throat> but I actually had two CVs. I had my expert witness CV and I had my behind the scenes CV. My behind the scenes CV included like a picture of me and it was just specifically for my reach out to attorneys that said, hey, I'm a real person. I'm not from some, you know, place that nobody knows, you know, that I exist. I'm actually a real legit person. I'm not a robot. Um, and here's my experience. And then my expert CV only included what was relevant to the case that I was working on. So if it had to be ICU experience, it was just that. I don't include extracurricular activities. I see this a lot on expert witness um, CVs, you guys, you don't want any extras because when you get pulled into deposition or trial, opposing counsel is going to tear you apart on anything that's on that CV. So and if you don't want to defend it, don't include it. So I wouldn't put on there that you like to collect puppies and like you do this as a side, you know, as a side hustle, you also, I don't know, sell jewelry. I would not include that on your CV as an expert witness. I probably wouldn't include it on your behind the scenes one either, but you know, what I'm trying to say is that opposing counsel will sit you down at a table and they will go line for line over your CV and they will tear you apart. Their job is to make you look like an absolute idiot and look like you're not credible. Okay. That's the truth. So you've got to, you know, the, the less fluff and butterflies and rainbows you put on your expert CV, the, the better for you. So just keep it professional. Keep your CV under two pages. Focus on key points and career highlights, you guys. This is not an autobiography, which I see a lot of nurses do. Clients can get to know you um, better after they've hired you. So once they hire you, you guys, when you sit down and you're having a cup of coffee and you're chatting, they can learn to, they can get to know you then. This is strictly your experience as a registered nurse. I hope that helps. Okay, people always ask, do I need a letter of introduction? You guys, the worst thing, now that I'm in a, a position where people are always writing me, asking me for subcontract gigs, <laughs> nurses will send me emails all the time, and I won't even get like a letter of introduction. It'll be like, hi, Janice, here's my resume for your consideration. And I'm like, who the heck are you, right? So should you include a letter of introduction? Yes, you guys, you have to tell them, first of all, it's annoying to just get resumes in your email and not know who this person is. I'm like, who does that? Lots of people do. So set yourself apart and send a letter of, of introduction to these attorneys, okay? But you guys do not, I love copy paste scripts. I have copy paste scripts, but I always tell my girls inside the NNC members lounge, you don't just copy paste and blast things out to people. You have to actually take the time to get to know each one of your clients and get to know the attorneys that you're reaching out to. So that means going to their LinkedIn account and finding out about them. That means then moving over to their website and finding out more about them. What awards have they won? What big trials have they done? You need to find out who they are, where they're from, and all kinds of stuff before you go spamming these lawyers with your you know, sales pitch. You guys, that will get you like X'd so quick. Lawyers are marketers and networkers by, by like trade. Like they understand networking and more than anybody. If you've ever gone to a, an attorney like networking event, you guys, they're handing out their cards, like they're having conversation. They know how it's done and they don't appreciate being blasted with just copy paste you know, general information. Like nobody likes that. Nobody wants to feel like they're being sold to, right? It's like the worst thing in the world. 
So really in your letter of introduction, you guys, this takes time. It takes, you know, research So sit down. I always tell everyone, pick five attorneys, focus on their unique needs, start and end your letter of recommend or uh, letter of introduction with specific statements about how you can help and what you can do for them that no one else can. You guys, you have to stop selling and start speaking in a language that says, this is what I can do for you. That's all the lawyer cares about. What can you do for me? Okay. And you need to speak that language. You need to stop trying. Here's what something I see all the time is nurses will be like, I've been a nurse for 30 years. I worked in the ICU. I did this. I did this. I did this. I did this. Blah, 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 blah. Nobody cares. Okay. Stop selling yourself and start telling them what you can do specifically for them to help them win their cases. That's the language they speak and understand. So stop, 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 stop selling yourself and start speaking in the how you can help language, okay? So research each attorney to whom you write and get to know their practice well enough to tailor your letter to their areas of expertise. So, you know, copy paste scripts are great and having kind of like templates are great, but you can't just send those out. You have to take those and you've got to tailor them for each attorney and their specialty, who they are, you know, and, and really speak to that. I'm sorry, let me check my messages because I'm getting a ton of messages. Okay. Make sure to include specific information about your background and your experience that directly relates to the attorney clients and demonstrate the ways that your expertise meets the attorney's specific needs. So do you see what I'm talking about here? Be very specific. How are you going to help them with A? Say you reach out to this lawyer and you know, this is really annoying, I apologize. Um, maybe I can leave, you know, I'm gonna leave this chat. Let's see here. Um, leave chat. I got my girls, they're all chatting it up, but it's messing up my, uh, my, my uh, flow here. <clears throat> um, you say you have a lawyer who's on LinkedIn and he's advertising that he did the, why does vaginal mesh come to mind? Because it's all over TV right now, right? Um, so you want to take, and how can your experience help him with that? What can you do to help him, you know, win those cases or, or make things easier for him with those cases. So really put a focus on what he's, he or she is working on and, and, and cater those, that letter of introduction to those specific, um, to specifically what they are working on. I hope that makes sense. If possible, and if you have permission, mention other attorneys with whom you've worked with on similar cases and who will vouch for you. So you just want to be careful. You don't want to, you know, break any HIPAA laws or a lot of these cases still haven't gone to trial. So a lot of them are confidential. So I wouldn't necessarily name like a case specifically, but if there's like a type of, you know, you've been working on, let's say a roundup case or something like that. Um, and you have permission to chat with the, you know, to, to talk, <clears throat> to talk about some of it, or one of the lawyers that you've worked with will, you know, send you a letter of recommendation or whatever. <clears throat> There's always that option too, to say, Hey, I actually worked on something very similar to this. This is the lawyer. He's happy to give, you know, um, a recommendation for me or, you know, a testimony to our company. So, you know, such and such. And then indicate that you're available for a brief informational meeting, either in person or by phone, so you can chat more about how you can be of service and answer any questions they may have. So a lot of lawyers like hopping on the phone. A lot of lawyers like Zoom conferences. I've done quite a few face-to-face -face, um, Zoom conferences with attorneys. Some of our younger attorney clients um, love, are very, um, tech, uh, not technical, gosh. <clears throat> are very um, computer savvy and they love like all this high tech stuff. And so they'll do like Zoom conferences with us and stuff like that. Um, but just make yourself available. Like say, hey, I'm happy to hop on the phone and talk with you about the services that we can provide. Um, and also that kind of helps them, you know, put a voice 
to, you know, all the stuff that you've just sent them over and, and makes them a little more comfortable knowing you're real. Um, let's see here. This is pretty much the same thing. You guys can look all at this when you have a chance. Um, so your brand. So I want to talk a bit about your brand and this is really important. Um, there are a lot of legal nurses out there. Um, if you were to search LinkedIn, there are thousands upon thousands upon thousands of legal nurses. A lot of them have started their LinkedIn accounts and then just went MIA. A lot of them are not even active on LinkedIn. A lot of nurses start and never quite finish. And they get frustrated or they realize it's a little bit harder than, than they originally thought or perhaps the program they took sold them on the fact that lawyers come knocking on your door and that's not how this works. Um, so what I do is I, um, sorry. Um, what I do is I really try to focus on standing out from the competition. So, the market is actually not saturated, you guys. I, a lot of nurses will say to me, well, if everybody's doing this, isn't the market saturated? No, it's not. Um, so many lawyers still have no idea legal nurses even exist. And we're still in a place where we're still educating attorneys about what LNCs are. Um, so the market is not saturated. The amount of legal nurses actually making a business out of this is, is far less than I think we uh, no, um, because on LinkedIn, it looks like there's just a ton of LNCs. A lot of people quit because it is tough, you guys. It's a business. It's not an overnight success. So, you know, you really want to find a way to stand out from the competition. <clears throat> and the way to do that is to really brand yourself. So if you close your eyes right now and you've been hanging out with me for a long time, I've been doing trainings for LNCs for four years, almost five years. Um, you close your eyes and you see red, probably red, <laughs> red or red high heels. Like that's what I've branded for nurses. I haven't branded red high heels to lawyers, but red, you see red, you see those high heels, those, you know, you, you kind of associate me with this color red and I've created a brand for myself. And you probably hear my voice when you sleep. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <clears throat> that's what you want to create in the LinkedIn world. Oops um, for your LNC business. So generally a brand consists of both written and visual elements that communicate feelings and ideas describing who you are and what you have to offer. So your business name, you guys should be catchy and relevant, easy to pronounce and spell, unique enough to not be mistaken for a similar business. And, um, <laughs> you guys, the reason I like the NNC members lounge um, this is our paid, this is the paid group where we have legal nurses that are actually working it, hustling, making money, doing really good at their LNC business. But one thing we do is we share our ideas in that group. And the, and the reason it's so important to like say, hey guys, I have this idea. Will you take a look at it? Is because sometimes our ideas in our heads sound amazing and incredible. And then we put them out there and somebody goes, hey, this looks like this. Let me give you an example. When I made my logo, I don't know, 10 years ago, I was so excited about it, you guys. It took me so long to make. And this was before things were super fancy. Like 10 years ago, like I was still like drawing my logo and it like somebody created it on like, I don't even know, like a DOS computer system and it was like all square and ugly. But I was so excited about it. I took it out and I decided I was going to show some of my lawyer friends because it was legal-ish and I wanted to get their feel. So I take this out and I go, hey guys, what do you think of my logo? And I was so proud, you guys. And I almost went, I almost took it to print. And the lawyer said to me, Janice, it looks like saggy boobs. You guys, I was mortified. Saggy boobs? I did not see saggy boobs until I looked at it after he said that. And I went, oh my God, it looks like saggy boobs. I could have been branding myself as saggy boobs to all these lawyers. You guys, it is so important to have a group of nurses that are behind you that are looking at stuff and seeing stuff in a way that our excitement is blurring. Okay. So whatever you're creating, don't just go to print with it. Make sure you get 
some hardcore honest feedback because the last thing you want to do is have a logo that looks like saggy boobs in a you know mostly male dominant field <laughs> i was mortified so um i say that because it's really embarrassing and it's really funny <sighs> anyway so when you're creating your your business name i also had oh you guys be careful with your business name sometimes we um because we're nurses our names are not don't get too creative because a lawyer won't know what you're doing and some people some nurses i see create names that almost sound like they're a nursing home versus a legal nurse consultant so just be careful in how you create your name and make sure that it's you know easy to pronounce easy to spell and then make it official by buying the domain name for it so go online and buy that domain um, and make it official and then your visual brand, you guys, creating consistent visual elements is a critical part of building a memorable brand as an LNC. So once you have created that logo, those colors, and you're consistently posting to social sites about services and stuff like that, you guys, this is more behind the scenes. I don't recommend you do all of this as an expert witness um, because they'll go in and look you up online and then they'll tear you apart too. Um, if you're okay with that, you know, go for it. But this is more for people who want to work behind the scenes. Um, ideally, your business name, domain name, and social media profile should all be consistent. I don't know why that there's just the word that says grab right there. So what happens when you have somebody else create your PowerPoint for you because you're too busy? Your brand. So generally, a brand consists of both written and visual elements that communicate feelings and ideas describing who you are and what you have to offer. So this is all the same stuff. This is what happens. Okay, so crafting your online presence, you guys. So your social mark, your social media marketing for LNCs. There are awesome legal nurses out there, you guys. Who have been doing legal nursing for a hundred plus years. <laughs> They're like, they like spearheaded legal nursing. The problem is their theories and their ways, a lot of them haven't changed with the times. And so a lot of their ways and their trainings are very archaic, okay? This is something I hear a lot from nurses that come in. They're still sending out mail, you know, snail mail flyers to attorneys and they never hear a thing and they spent $300 doing it. Um, you know, they're still doing very outdated marketing things. And it's sad because they're spending a lot of money and I did it too. And when, as the time's been changing and maybe it's my age, I've been able to keep up with, you know, okay, this is where marketing is going. Marketing has really gone to the social, to social media. I mean, pretty much everything we do is social media related, right? Everyone has their phone just glued to them. And so I do a lot, a lot of training inside the NNC Members Lounge on crafting your online presence, building your social media for attorneys, showing you how to get on their radar through Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, you know, TikTok. I mean, you name it. Um, there's a way to get in front of lawyers because lawyers are not just lawyers, you know, they're, they're still people. So there's a way to get in front of people and not spend a gazillion dollars and get hired in like nine years. So I love LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a professional platform, you guys, that really acts like a CV for you. It showcases your experience, your experience as a nurse and your skill set 24-7. It's a way to build your network, to find new business, and to become a thought leader. So it you can really build your LinkedIn. And you guys, it's not overnight. Um, years it took me to build my LinkedIn. If you go to my LinkedIn, you can see how many connections I have, all of that. Did not happen overnight so don't expect it to happen overnight for you either it's a it's a process um always keep in mind that everything you present on social media reflects the type of work product that you'll be providing to your attorney clients and i say this because 
we get really excited sometimes and we'll like type a post um, and there'll be like a lot of spelling errors or we're missing commas or something's not right. What if you post something like that, a lawyer is scrolling through their, your, you know, their LinkedIn feed and they see all these spelling errors and stuff. They're going to think to themselves, wow, well, this isn't a person I want working for me. I mean, their, their posts are sloppy. What's their work product going to look like? So really, you know, take the time to make sure that your posts and your blogs and all that stuff is nice. And if you guys, if you suck at writing, cause like sometimes I suck at writing <laughs> or I'm busy, you can hire someone to fix your mistakes, okay? Just make sure before it's out there in the social media world that it's perfect because lawyers are going to gauge what type of LNC you're gonna be based off of what you're posting on social media. So be cognizant of that. You can and should post and share content on LinkedIn that's relevant to your ideal client. So sometimes when we're first starting, it can be very overwhelming. So I will tell the nurses, just pick one specialty. What's one you know, type of, of law that you'd like to focus on? Personal injury attorneys, great. Make all of your posts relevant to personal injury attorneys and start there. You guys, you only really need two to three amazing attorneys to keep you busy. So it's not like you're out there trying to get hundreds of thousands of lawyers. You need two or three with a consistent you know, with consistent work coming your way to replace your RN income, really. So um, just find one type of client workers comp attorney, find one that you love and just focus, focus, focus until you have your first, you know, one to three attorney client. And be sure to log into your LinkedIn profile at least once a week. You guys don't get sucked up on LinkedIn and like spend all day there five days a week. Okay, do your business and and focus marketing on other things. I'll see nurses, I'll see nurses posting all day long on LinkedIn and I'm like, you know what it looks like? It looks like they don't have any work as an LNC and they're desperate. Okay. Um you are not a desperate LNC. You're a busy LNC with a ton of attorney clients and you are not sitting on your computer all day, you know, bored out of your mind. Um, you can showcase who you are as a professional legal nurse consultant while also easily connecting with others who are active on the platform. So LinkedIn's amazing. I love LinkedIn. It's great. We talk about how to do ads on LinkedIn and I teach all of that inside the NNC Members Lounge. Facebook, so you guys, as of, as of February 2019, 2.23 billion people log into Facebook every month. 65% of those people use it daily. There are billions of people on Facebook. This means that you can reach many professionals on Facebook, including attorneys and other legal professionals. This is an opportunity that simply cannot be ignored. You guys, you have to respect each platform and know that LinkedIn is a professional platform. Facebook is an entertaining platform, okay? Many attorneys get so caught up in their cases and trials that they don't reach out for help. So I see on, I see on their radar, radar through Facebook, through a Facebook business page where I share, and look at this, it's just like ends. Um, wow, I should have read this before I paid these people to do this, to put this together for me. All they had to do was take it from my book. <laughs> Um, you know, where I share information relevant to attorneys. So I'll talk about, you know, drug tests, lab tests, um, stuff like that. You can hear my baby in the background. This is real life, you guys. Um, and Facebook, you know, you want to just keep it light and airy on Facebook. Okay. It seems to be something that if a lawyer is sitting down in the hallway at a courthouse waiting for his trial and he's on Facebook and he's scrolling through Facebook, he says, oh, look at that. That's kind of cool. I might need to reach out to that person. Um, so Facebook also reminds previous clients that they can hire you again and let you connect with new attorneys in various legal specialties. Wow, they really like didn't do a very good job on this. Um, so Facebook's great because I'll add my attorney clients to my business page. And then if I'm not hearing from them, I'll run an ad that target markets my attorney clients. And then I'll get a call that's like, oh, hey, Janice, I have a case for you. 
So it's a great way to kind of stay on their radar um, without being on their, like without feeling like you're annoying them. Because a lot, I get a lot of nurses say, should I follow up? What should I say? What do I do? Well, there you go. I run target, target marketed ads to my attorney clients, add them to my Facebook business page, and I let the ads do the work for me. Creating content for your Facebook business page may seem difficult at first, but it's quite simple once you get started. Let's see if they actually gave us ideas. No, they didn't look at that. Here are some ideas on, no. So I, you know, when we're talking about ideas, you guys, I keep it simple for Facebook, but lab values. Um, a lot of times what I tell the nurses is, you know, make sure a third grader could understand the medical terms. So it's going to be super simple things. Okay. Or something I love too is stuff that's in the news and that's relevant to like what's going on in the media now and how that could relate to an attorney to an attorney and and expanding on that and explaining it a little better remember when when weed became legal um i did a bunch of things on on marijuana okay so like things that are popular and in the media are always a great are always great content twitter you guys twitter is very different um i have a twitter account i'm actually not very active on it um but twitter is a presence that can help build your professional network even if it doesn't provide much of a showcase for your skills and experience. So if you're not interested in actively participating on Twitter, at Twitter, on Twitter, at least consider setting up a private account just for listening in. And this is what I do. I have a private account and I kind of follow up and see what's going on in the legal world. Follow breaking news and any trends that might impact your business or anything that you might be able to use to help, um, you know, reach out to lawyers. So I add my, my LinkedIn, um, my LinkedIn link to behind the scenes work only you guys. So to my invoices or my CV, my letter of introduction, my business cards, anything that's not going to be discoverable, I will have my LinkedIn so that the attorney can connect with me and, um, make sure that you have it so that those lawyers can click on it and quickly go over to your LinkedIn account. And what's great is you can ask for um, testimony from your lawyer clients on LinkedIn. So it's a really quick way for them to, you know, access some of those testimony if you don't have your, your website up and running, um, which I know a lot of people don't because, it's, you know, it takes a lot of work to get that going. Okay, so creating the perfect website. First impressions matter. You guys, should you have a website? Yes. Will that website generate attorneys, even if you are an SEO expert, okay, and you hire an SEO expert, which I've done, it still does not really generate a lot of lawyers um, that just automatically come to your site and reach out to you. I, this is a common misconception. It doesn't happen. Why? Majority of the reason is most lawyers don't know what they're looking for. So it's really hard for them to find you. Now, if you have like expert witness, um, you know, maybe they'll be able to find you that way. But a lot of the time, a lot of the times they don't know that they're looking for a legal nurse consultant. And I've found over the years that that is kind of the reason why we're, you know, our websites aren't really out there working for us but your website will be where you're sending these lawyers. Um, and this link will be what they're sending to their friends, their, their attorney colleagues, when you've done really great work product for them. So you gotta have a website. It's gotta be nice. It doesn't have to be fancy and it doesn't have to be expensive, okay? I had a free one for a while. I hated it. It had all these stupid advertising things on it. I don't recommend doing free websites anymore, you guys. If you have a business, you need to invest money. Okay, just a little bit, not a lot, but nothing looks worse than a Gmail account and a free website to say uh, you're not having any success, okay? <laughs> uh, people be like, I do a free one and I have a Gmail account and I'm like, okay, I mean, if honestly, 
if I was looking at the person with the free website and the Gmail account over the person who has the paid website with no spammy ads all over it and the professional like Janice at nationalnurseconsulting.com, who am I going to pick? I'm definitely not going to pick the person with the free website and the Gmail account. One, they don't look legit. Two, they look cheap. And you know, that's a reflection of, of like kind of their personality. Like don't, don't be cheap. You guys, this is a business you need to invest. And I'm just going to be honest, like invest in your business. I'm so mad. Oh, sorry. I'm going to go off. I'm, I'm going to get up on a soapbox here, but I get people that are like, they want to start a multi-million dollar business and they don't want to invest a penny. Like, uh, do you guys know that I invested a hundred thousand dollars in myself and my LNC business in the last 11 years, you guys, marketing classes, learning how to use LinkedIn, paying for programs to teach me how to market online. You guys stop being cheap. This can be a multi-million dollar business, but you've got to get in the right set of mind. Okay. You're going to have to invest in your business. And if you're not serious about investing, the attorneys will see that. I will get off my soup box now. Creating the perfect website. First impressions matter. Okay, you guys, a well-developed website allows your current and prospective clients to locate you quickly and gives your existing clients an easy way to refer their colleagues to you. A website can also act as a vehicle for collecting leads, sharing content, and providing samples of your work. So I've had more spam leads off of my LNC business than I've had attorney leads. So. I just want you to know that it's, it's just, it's not really used to generate those attorneys. It's more so used as a link that you're giving out saying, Hey, check out my website, check out my testimony. Here's the services we can provide. Okay. You got to purchase your domain and choose a company to host your website that, so that it can be available online. We talk all about this inside the NNC members lounge, you guys. Um, and I give you a ton of, of resources and ideas for that too, from super affordable to super expensive, well, you know, whatever your budget. Professional email is a huge step toward establishing your professionalism as a legal nurse. It's hard to take an entrepreneur seriously if they are conducting business from a personal Gmail or Hotmail account. Oh, this makes me so angry. In fact, the nurses that are inside my members lounge, if they're still sending me email from a Gmail account, I just write them back. I'm like, where's your professional, where's your professional web, your professional email? Like, don't write me from your Gmail account. You guys invest in your business and get a professional email. Okay. You know, it's funny. We just actually had a, um, my team and I, um, I don't know. I don't even know. We have at any given time about 15 nurses that, that work with us in our, like, are my, the love of my life. I love my nurses. Um, but we were having this conversation as we, we were getting, um, emails from an attorney through a Gmail account and we wouldn't even work with him. I was like, is this guy legit? Like, did he just start his business? Is he a scammer? And then, you know, he couldn't even afford, we had, I think it, it was like one hour and it was going to be like 150 bucks and he like didn't have the money. And I was like, I don't know that this is a real legit guy. So you guys really be professional. This is a professional organization. Get your professional email. And you guys, you still have to be HIPAA compliant and encrypted in your emails. And I don't think you can do that through Gmail or Hotmail. Um, and it just looks funny to be like Janice at hotmail.com, right? It looks cheesy. So don't do it. Get that fixed. So websites, you know, search engine optimization or SEO. I hear people all the time, like get your website SEO, blah, 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 blah. You guys, like I said, it's, you know, it, you might get one or two attorneys through your website that find you randomly, even with the best of the best SEOs. And I have the best of the best SEOs. I had, I paid like 10 grand for my website. Okay. And I still don't get lawyers that just show up on my website. So don't spend a lot of money on that. Um, why is there a lowercase I? Man, these people, whoo. Um, what do I put on my website, you guys? Go to my website and check it out. Put on your website what I have on my website if you want. I actually don't include my fee schedule on my website. Some people do, I don't because I don't feel our services are always black and white. 
Um, and I feel when you put your seat, when you put your fee schedule up on your website, it can really stop some lawyers from working with you. So I always like to talk about, this is what I can do for you. Um, you know, find out what their needs are, find out how much money they have to spend. And then I work with them on their budget. So I don't put my CV, my fee schedule on my website. Personal preference, something I found over the, the, you know, 11 years in business. Logical website organization, make sure that your website just makes sense, like when they're going on it. And you guys, ooh, another soapbox. Do not, um, your website is not, again, an autobiography. Like I see nurses that have LNC sites and when you go to their homepage, you guys, it's so overwhelming. Like my eyes almost cross and I wanna die. Um, like, they're posting things about their dog and what they made for dinner last night. Don't do that. You should have a really clean homepage that very easily shows the lawyers where they need to go to get what information they need and to contact you and get off, right? Okay. They don't need to be reading about the awesome steak dinner you made last night. Know what content goes where, your website and your brand, maintaining your website. So, you know, make sure your brand and your website kind of go hand in hand. And maintaining your website can be tough. Um, so you may want to hire a company if this, you know, you're like, I'm going to be an LNC for years. You may want to have somebody that maintains your website because updates have to be done. Sometimes those updates will like make things funky. And I actually have, so the NNC Members Lounge is a website I designed on my own and I do all the upkeep and it's not easy. Um, so I don't actually recommend, unless you're like super savvy, maintaining your own website behind the scenes. Um, I would let a professional do it. And we have some that we recommend inside the NNC Members Lounge too. Blogging. So one way to make your website get to like the top of Google on top of having SEOs and all those fancy things is to consistent, consistently blog. And so you want to be a content maven, I say. You really want to have content, um, you know, at least once a week. Um, and you guys, it doesn't need to be huge. If you go to the NNC or if you go to nncmembers.com or legalnursesrock.com and you click on, I think about in the drop down menu is blog. My blogs are like a paragraph. Okay. It's just enough information that people go, wait, I need to know more. And that's what you want for your attorney clients. You don't want to give them everything, right? You want to give them just enough where they realize oh, hey, that was really helpful, but this is a little tough and a little confusing and maybe I do need a medical expert. So you want to blog just enough that, you know, they're interested, they're, they're excited, they want to learn more, but they still need help. I hope that makes sense. So the more you blog, the higher you rank. We've talked about that. Include keywords in your blogs, you guys, in the text of your website and on your blog that will attract the right kind of traffic to you. Some of those keywords, you guys, I noticed. So we pulled, um, you know, might actually, actually I do have it. And I'll share it inside the NNC members Facebook group. Um, it's like pages and pages of the most common terms lawyers search on the internet when they're looking for expert witnesses. So those are key words you actually want to use in your blog because that will help your that will help you be discovered um, more, if that makes sense. The more you use those keywords, the higher you rank. So remember to add images to make your blog more visually appealing and less overwhelming, you know, due to that heavy text. And consider creating fact sheets and downloadable templates or tools and sharing them on your blog. So I have like a free download for lawyers on my um, nationalnurseconsulting.com page. They can go and get like, I think it's like a free medical record checklist or something. But what it does is when they get it, it gives me their contact information. They have to enter their contact information in order to get that free download. And now I have their information so I can now reach out and say, hey, I saw you downloaded this document, um, you know, what are you having trouble with? What do you find that, that is the most frustrating thing? You know, what is, what is the most frustrating part about reviewing medical records and how can I help make that easier for you? So those download, um, those downloadable templates and tools and stuff like that that you share on your blog are really, really great. 
Um, and don't forget to tie your blog posts back into your social media accounts, you guys. Share your posts on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter, and just make sure that all of that is linked together. Blogging is great, and you should really love blogging. Um, sometimes it can be tough to be consistent because a lot of us, when I first started, I worked 12 hours, I was trying to build a business, I was in a relationship, like people have kids. It can be hard. But you guys, blogging offers the opportunity to share what matters to you. Your writing skills um, start to improve, right? And you raise your professional is your professional profile. So you start to become that thought leader, that person that, especially if you're sharing on like LinkedIn, you start to become this person that they're always seeing on LinkedIn. And so the first person they think of when they need help with medical stuff is you, right? Blogging can also be very social, particularly when you keep the tone of your blog light and friendly and leave the comment section on so that people can interact with your post. I let people interact, but you guys, you want to um, definitely check your blog post because there are um, trolls and they will just come in and they will just write stuff that is just disgusting and post disgusting links and you're just like, what? And you want to be able to delete those. So build a community of like-minded professionals and potential clients. So by simply adding social media buttons to your website and blog, you can create a space for a community of potential clients to hang out and you'll have the opportunity to network with them and watch your social following expand. So I actually have quite a few uh, lawyers that follow me and they're on, I, I actually had a rule that I would never, I wasn't going to allow lawyers to friend me and just keep them on their, on my, on my business page. But they all kept friending me on Facebook. So I was like, okay, well, sure. So that's why I try to keep my posts on my personal Facebook page very limited um, because I do actually have a really big lawyer following on my personal Facebook page. Um, so, you know, just be mindful of what you're posting once you become a professional in this field and you are connecting with lawyers. Um, you know, I still try to not, I don't post anything political. Um, you guys, there's no better way to turn people off than posting a bunch of political crap, okay? Um, especially if it's now a, turned into like a business platform for you, don't do it. Um, keep your thoughts to yourself. <laughs> um, you know, there's just stuff you want to be mindful of that, you know, if, if you now have professional people following you, um, conduct yourself professionally online. All you need to do to become a blogger is to share as much useful information about your areas of expertise as you can. That's it, you guys. You know, something that I really like is the AALNC actually sends out monthly newsletters. And if you're like lost for an idea, I will read one of their, you know, one of the, um, one of the articles that they have in there. And then I will talk about it. And I will use that and, and switch it in a way that is helpful for attorneys. So there's your ideas. You don't even have to get super creative on coming up with ideas. Email marketing. I love email marketing. Some of you are on my email marketing list. Thank you so much. Some of you send me nice little messages to let me know that my messages still say, let's make 2017 happen. You guys, I'm so slammed. I know the dates are funky. Um, haven't had time to go in and fix them but I know that they need to be fixed. Um, business is booming and that's a good thing, right? So I like email marketing because it creates that familiar, familiarity with potential clients. So you can really stay on their radar. Um, email marketing is great because you can build your email list and select, you know, what I do for my lawyer list is I have one specific to MedMal guys, specific to PI guys, specific to workers comp guys, and I create content specific to them that gets sent out monthly just to stay on their radar. Like just when they're about to forget about who I am, boom, here's another email. Hey, hopefully this helps you out. So I love it because it leverages your time, you guys. Email marketing is amazing. Um, you're not having to sit and write you know, originally when you first start, yeah, you've got to sit down and write out a ton of content, but then you can, you know, reshare that content with all your newbies or again, because people forgot to read it, didn't have time to read it, whatever. So design your email and create content. You automate 
test and distribute your campaign. I go over how to do this step by step in the NNC Members Lounge, you guys. Uh, I keep saying the NNC Members Lounge. If you are in the Legal Nurses Rock public group, you guys, you are in the free group. I give out as much free information as I possibly can. Um, but for those of you who are ready to take your business to like the next level, we have a group that is specific for our paid members. It's the NNC Members Lounge. Um, and you can check that out at legalnursesrock.com. Click on business tools and you can learn more about that. But this is where our nurses go that are serious. And I have to have two separate groups like that because I get a lot of messages from people who are just toying with the idea of being a legal nurse. Um, and that kind of, you know, are wishy-washy and like tons and tons of messages. And then I want to really invest my time in the people that are serious about it and, and are serious about investing in themselves. So that's why we have two separate groups. Analyze the results you guys and tweak accordingly, rinse and repeat. So, uh, let's see, what can I tell you about all of this here? <laughs> Sometimes fun on life is relevant, seasonal messages. So here's some things that I want you to just kind of consider, you know, putting yourself out there um, in your email uh, campaigns. You can send out current case studies, general business announcements, you guys, if your fee plan, if your fee schedule's increased, you can send that out. Hey, 2020, we've upped our fee schedule by 10 bucks, whatever. Um, if you have an interview with an attorney client, you can share that. Any up-to-date industry news you guys can include in your email campaigns, reviews of recently published educational work. So if there's something that you want to review, that's always good. Reviews are good. A summary of your latest blog posts, you know, you can just say, hey, I just posted a blog. It's about marijuana. Check it out here and put a link in it. It doesn't have to be super fancy, you guys. It, you, this, the whole purpose of email marketing is just so people don't forget who you are, okay? Um, and you want to deliver some value to your attorneys, but you really want to stay on their radar by saying, hey, here I am. Don't forget me, rather than being like, hey, Mr. Attorney, um... Uh, I haven't heard from you in a while. Let your email marketing campaigns do that for you. Um, something fun in life, but still relevant to business. So, you know, I have a lot of awesome attorney clients that are people <laughs> and they're funny. Um, so sometimes some of the stuff that I include to them is different because we have a different relationship. We have this fun, funny relationship. And so some of my email marketing to them might be different. And then seasonal messages for holidays and special events. I always send my clients a holiday gift. Um, you know, I, that's just what I do. And that helps keep you on their radar too. All right. This is so funny that they, these are like double, doubled. Segmenting contacts and customizing contact. Okay. So we talked a bit about this, but if you were inside of an email marketing system, I like to separate them so into practice specialties, so personal injury, criminal law, malpractice, et cetera, et cetera. You could, you could separate them into geographical locations. So like say, you know, I'm from Orange County. These are my Orange County PI attorneys. Um, you could do current clients, prospective clients. Um, you know, it, it's up to you how you want to uh, create that email marketing system and, and how you want to reach out. And then, you know, you got to keep up with it because you you want to check your email engagement and see which of those lawyers are opening your emails versus which ones aren't. Um, you know, they're busy. Um, and, you know, something that I teach everyone to you guys is a lot of nurses are nervous about selling, and I actually have a blog about this, but rather than focus on selling, really focus on developing that personal relationship with these lawyers and just becoming a person of value for them. When you really shift your mind to, um, you know, to think like, I am here to serve a purpose and to provide value for these attorneys. It becomes a lot easier to market yourself than if you have the, oh my gosh, how do I sell myself to them? I just focus on creating relationships. I, I hey, strike up a conversation, learn all about them, find all about their practice specialty, um, find out what, you know, what they have 
the most difficult time with when they're inside medical. I ask a lot of questions, really get to know them and really um, care about them and develop that personal relationship. You guys, a lot of my attorneys are just returning clients because we have that personal relationship. Or I, it's funny, I actually have one attorney who I've never done any work for. She's incredible. And she has referred so many clients to me. And she actually just called me the other day to ask me to look over some records for her, which I happily did, you know, for free, pro bono, um, because she's been so amazing. But I've never actually worked for her. And she's, and all, my, all the people she's referred over to me, they've called her to say, hey, we absolutely love, you know, the work that Janice has provided. And so, like, create relationships. You guys never know. Like they may not work with you specifically, but they're going to give your name out. You may be the only nurse they know, you guys. Don't, don't, um, don't um, underestimate the value that you bring to the table as a nurse. I, I, I'm going to jump on my soapbox. Somebody was saying, how much do I charge uh, an attorney for being a brand new legal nurse consultant? You guys are not charging attorneys for being a brand new legal nurse consultant. You're charging attorneys for being a nurse. So what do you charge? I don't know. Should it be around 150 an hour? Yeah, it should. My range is about 110 to 135. That's about what I charge my attorneys. 150 if they only use me once a year. But you're not charging them $35 to $70 an hour. You're a nurse. You guys, we went into this field because there is a little more money, autonomy. Plus, you have business expenses you now have to pay for, right? You've got a website. You've got this email marketing system. You've got to market. You've got to do all these expenses. So when you're when when you're asking for 150 an hour, you guys, that's covering an umbrella of your business to keep your business up and running. You know, once you get done with your taxes, I think you get like 12 bucks an hour. But really, you guys, you stop thinking, I'm a brand new LNC. What do I charge these lawyers? And start thinking. I'm a nurse. These lawyers need me. This is my hourly fee. No ands, ifs, or buts. And if the attorney doesn't know your value, guys, move on because there are plenty of attorneys that do. These guys make their 350 plus per hour. And you know what? They don't go out and say, hey, Mr. Attorney, what should I charge my client since I'm a brand new attorney? No, 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 they don't. You guys, they're an attorney. They're going to charge the same amount for each client, whether they're brand new today or, you know, 10 years down the road and you do too. So stop it. I see it all the time. Stop it, stop it, stop it. All right. Grab their attentions. You guys, I'm done talking about emails, but um, here are some ways to grab their attention. Definitely analyze and tweak your results. Like if you notice you sent out, I do this all the time. Like I'll send out an email and if nobody opened it, I'm like, ooh, maybe I should change the title. Change the title and suddenly 100% of the emails have been opened. So you guys, you are going to be tweaking things. Things are not gonna work. Um, I do, when I run ads, I actually run two ads of the same, I, I'll run two similar ads so they'll be about the same thing, but they'll look different. So I'll have a different picture and I might, re I might word things a little bit differently and I'll see which one, it's called split testing. I'll see which one it grabs the most attention and then I'll turn off the one that doesn't and I'll keep running the one that does. You guys will constantly be analyzing results and tweaking them accordingly when you're marketing. So when I have nurses say, I reached out to a hundred lawyers and nothing worked, guess what? If it didn't work, you need to tweak it and you need to try again. Doesn't mean legal nursing doesn't work, you guys. It means you need to tweak your verbiage. Or it means the lawyers are busy, which happens. I sent out an email to a lawyer, never heard from him. Four years later, he reached out to me, gave me a class action. Biggest case of my life changed our entire business, you guys, four years later. So stop complaining when you reach out to 100 lawyers and you don't hear anything a week later, okay? You are in this 
for the long term and the long haul. You didn't jump into legal nursing and, you know, expect to make a million dollars overnight. It's not going to happen. It doesn't happen with any business, you guys. You've got to start thinking like business people. I think that's the disconnect is we get a lot of nurses in here that aren't business minded, business minded. You've got to be business minded. I, you know, I give a ton of books inside the, as recommendations inside the members lounge, because you've got to grow your mind as a business person. You're not a nurse anymore. I mean, you're a nurse helping lawyers, but you're a business person first. You've got to start thinking like a business person. <laughs> I love this. I need to write out to them and tell them you made a lot of mistakes. The power of thought leadership. So you want to author your own destiny. So you guys, I recommend publishing a book and the benefits of an ebook versus the benefits of a hard copy book. I've done both. I have both on Amazon. Let me tell you, if you're brand new, don't go out there and try to write a hard copy book right away. Okay. It's expensive. Um, it's a, it's a nightmare. It took me four years to create my book, multiple edits. Um, you know, it is a pain in the butt. It was like 10 grand. It was a lot of work. An ebook, you guys could create in 15 minutes if you want, post it on Amazon. They'll read it. If it's appropriate, they'll start selling it for you. Ebooks are great. And what's great about them is if you write something that's helpful to lawyers, you can start um, marketing that. And it makes you, um, you know, it's, it's, it makes you that, that authority in your field. It's really great. Their eBooks are faster and less expensive to publish. Yes. Faster and easier to share with others. Yes. Immediately, they, they immediately download, which is that instant gratification for those lawyers. Busy attorneys are more likely to check out an electronic version on their device while waiting for a meeting for a meeting or during breaks from, you know, in the courtroom and links from your eBook can take readers directly to in additional information. Oops, what's going on here? I love the benefits of a hard book, but we're not going to go over them, you guys, because I don't recommend it for a really long time till you've got some experience because it's just expensive. Oh, is that it? No. Um, we're not even going to cover this. These are services that you can use to publish your books. I know Amazon for sure. You can publish your eBooks through. Here's some other ideas. So networking in the real world, you guys. So besides social media, you got to get out there. You got to make face, at least in the first, you know, few months, few years of your LNC business. You got to be a real person. Just remember to be you and be memorable. Lawyers are people too. I know we get really nervous and scared. We're going to say the wrong thing. That's why for me, it's easier to default to, uh, go back to nurse mode. If you're going out to like an attorney event, go in with the mindset of a nurse. What do you do as a nurse? You ask a lot of questions and you do a lot of listening. Do the same thing. Don't put so much pressure on yourself to sell. Just I'm going into this attorney network event and I'm just going to make a lot of friends. I'm going to get a lot of cards. I'm going to ask a lot of questions and I'm going to get to know a lot of people. That's it. We get so scared because we're so afraid we're going to say the wrong thing. So I just go in and I just say, hey, blah, blah, blah. How are you? What do you do? What do you practice? Tell me more about that. Ask a ton of questions. Eventually, they're going to say, what do you do? And that's your chance to say, oh, I'm a legal nurse consultant. And they're going to say, what the hell is that? And that's your opportunity to share what an LNC is. You want to craft your elevator pitch. You guys, don't craft it to where it sounds like you're a robot. Come up with a one-liner that explains what you do. But I ask a lot of questions before I ever even pitch my services. There is nothing worse than like selling yourself as soon as you meet somebody. Like that just turns people off. Invest in relationships, you guys. And then if you're going to get a booth, you guys, which I recommend, I've done a few booths in my time. Um, I have a video on booths. <laughs> Which is funny, I gave out hand sanitizer, right? Yeah, but now it's like $300 for a bottle of hand sanitizer. So that would probably not be what you want to hand out. Um, you know, think of your audience 
when you're presenting your services at the event. So if you go to like a personal injury event, don't bring medical malpractice sample work product. Like make sure that you are, you know, catering to your audience. I know that sounds obvious, but a lot of people mess this up. Um, who's gonna be attending and who's gonna visit your booth? How can you deliver information to them in a way that's unique and appealing? And what kind of information are these people gonna want? And how can you make yourself stand out? To so make yourself stand out, you guys, my, I wonder if it's on here. So my suggestion is be prepared. I brought a lightweight folding chair I bought on Amazon for like five bucks. Bring drinking water, a healthy sm snack, bring some breath mints, you guys. Pads of paper and pens. Uh, I didn't have a pad of paper and pen and I was like, ah, oh, the first time I did one. So make sure you have one of those. And chargers for your mobile phone and other device. And some um, tips, you guys, be friendly and approachable. Do not sit in your chair and wait for people to approach you, okay? Get up, stand in front of that table, greet people. You be the greeter. That's what I did. I was like, I wanna be closest to the door. I wanna catch people when they're walking in and then when they're leaving. And I stood right in front of my table and I was greeting people. I was handing them cookies and a water and a hand sanitizer. And they're like, who are you? Attorneys are, you guys are people too. And some of them are really, really quirky and will stand around and talk with you for hours. And you're like, okay. And then you'll find out they're like a family law attorney and really can't even help you. And you're kind of bummed, but um, you know, they, attorneys know attorneys. So every relationship is important, um, but just be friendly and approachable. You guys never stop prospecting. Keep your funnel full and create an endless referral cycle. So always make your clients feel special. Set your goals and keep your eye on the prize. We do, um, we do um, mem not memory boards, <laughs> um, vision boards in our members lounge. We did a vision board together. Um, and that's a lot of fun, you guys. You know, you got to, entrepreneurs have to be a little crazy. You got to be a dreamer. You got to be a little nutty. You know, you're trying stuff most people aren't. Um, you've got to be brave. And, you know, sitting down and dreaming together is really important. So I encourage you to, you know, write out your goals and really keep your eye on the prize. Why are you doing this? Like, why are you being a legal nurse? Why? Tell me in the comment section, you guys, if you're still here with me, I want to hear why are you wanting to pursue legal nursing or why are you a legal nurse? Why did you get into this field? Type it out. Type it out here for me. I want to read them because I will go through and read them. And always keep your eye on the prize. It's so easy to default and just go back to the hospital because it's comfortable. And that paycheck comes every two weeks. I get it. You guys, I get it. Um, you know, but keep your eye on the prize. If your heart says, I want this, I want to do this, I'm going to make this happen, you keep going and plug in with us inside the NNC Members Lounge, you guys. We are there to encourage you and motivate you and help you. We have templates. Um, you know, our girls are really making magic happen and, I'm, and our guys, we have guys too. Sorry, it's a, it's a female dominant, you know, dominant um, industry, but there are men that do this and do really, really well. Um, and, uh, you know, I just, just, just keep going, you guys. Um, definitely give a thought to joining our community. It's not for everyone, but if you are serious about building your LNC business, you guys visit legalnursesrock.com. Click on the business tools tab to learn more. We do have a payment plan now for you guys. Um, because I know finances can be tough. We have a lot of mentors in that group. A lot of legal nurses are, are so willing to just hop on the phone and help other newbies. I mean, we have created a group of legal nurses unlike any other, that, truly. We have a group of nurses that, that just are not like any other. There's, there's nothing out there like our group. Um, inspirational motivational, the mean nurses, you know, kind of wean themselves out. <laughs> the mean ones don't stick around, which is great. Um, so you're going to get a lot of support, a lot of help, and, um, you know, really start to see your, your dreams happen. So 
I um, thank you guys for being here with me today. I really hope this helps. I know a lot of you are wanting to, you know, hop in and, and, and learn more. And I've been meaning to do this. And I thought, what the hell? I'm just going to do it right now because I have an hour of a free time. So um, feel free to watch the replay. And I'm cheering you guys on every single day. Okay, you got this. Take care, everybody. See you soon.